In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and warm welcome to Carmel Light, reflection on the day's readings. It's the 21st of March, Monday of the third week of Lent. This day is marked as World Poetry Day by UNESCO, World Down Syndrome Day, International Day of Forest by United Nations, then International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And on this 21st of March, we remember Saint Nicholas of Flu. Saint Nicholas was born in 1417 and was a soldier. At the age 30, he married and he and his wife Dorothy had 10 children. At the age 50, he told his wife that he had heard God's call to be a hermit. Dorothy recognized his call and gave her consent. And he spent the next 20 years alone in a small cottage, fasting and listening to the increasing rivers of people who came to ask his advice or pray with him. At 64, he was asked to settle a brewing civil war in Switzerland and he was so respected and his counsel so wise that his advice was immediately enacted, saving Swiss peace and unity. He died in 1487, at the age 70, surrounded by his children and embraced by his wife. And he is honored to this day as a national hero in Switzerland. Saint Nicholas of Flu, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, now let's pay attention to the first reading of the day. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. In those days, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor. Because by him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now the Syrians, on one of their raids, had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria? He would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord, Thus, and so spoke the girl from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, 
and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. And he came and stood before him and said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brother and sister, Naaman came to Israel wanting only to be healed but he left believing in God. His approach was purely pragmatic and intellectual. I have a problem and there is a prophet in Israel who can help me with it. What happened along the way that made the difference? The answer is, at once, both simple and profound, Naaman met God. Naaman's story shows us that the process of conversion is ultimately the result of God's grace, not just our own logic and seeking. Naaman was looking for a dramatic healing from the prophet Elisha. Elisha told him to bathe in the river Jordan. Reason told Naaman that the waters of the Jordan were no different than the rivers in Damascus. 
added to this that elisha would not even come out to speak with him what sort of wonder worker was this fellow when naaman stepped out of the river however something more than scales and swords fell off of him years of accumulated sin were washed away as well naaman came out a new man he realized that there was only one true god and that this god was a force to be reckoned with elisha's faith and wisdom in this story teaches another important lesson unlike the terrified king of israel elisha wasn't worried about what he would say to naaman or how naaman would receive his words he was more interested in getting naaman into a position where he could be open to god's miraculous work this should give us hope as we try to share our faith with our friends and family members we don't need to have a specific script or a perfect game plan that will win someone over to the lord we just need to love them speak the truth to them as lovingly as we can and pray for them we just need to set the stage so that they can be open to god coming to meet them just be faithful to doing your part and let god do the rest lord help me to guide people to you so that you can touch them with your love amen brothers and sisters our psalm response includes the phrase my soul is thirsting for god the living god this refrain should be our theme for today for lent and for our life let's pray that psalm now your response My soul is thirsting for God the living God My soul is thirsting for God the living God When can I enter and appear before the face of God Like the deer that yearns for running streams So my soul is yearning for you my God My soul is thirsting for God the living God My soul is thirsting for God the living god when can i enter and appear before the face of god my soul is thirsting for god the living god o oh, send forth your light and your truth they will guide me on they will bring me to your holy mountain to the place where you dwell my soul is thirsting for god the living god When can I enter and appear before the face of God and I will come to the altar of God to God my joy and gladness to you will I give thanks on the harp o god my god my soul is thirsting for god the living god glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen pray for god's blessing now may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister we remember today 
all those who are celebrating their birthdays. Father Joy Francis Carmelite, Sister Estera Carmelite, sister from Baroda, Nixon Suarez from Mumbai, Kimberly Maria de Cruz from Dubai, presently in Canada, Anthony Oliver from Kandivili, Mumbai, Ansel Justin Fernandez from Bahrain, Vinolia Lobo from Wamanchur, Mangalore. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. Nili D'Souza from Karkala, Udupi and Victor Martis from Kulshekar, Mangalore. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. We pray for these departed souls. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great day and a week. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.